Good morning, everyone. Treasure Troller here. It's here. Here it is, the video you've all been waiting for. The Alone season finale vlog. And I know it's been a little while. I know Alone's been over for a little over a week now. I've done this vlog like two or three times and deleted it. I wasn't quite sure how I wanted to present this because there's some things that I that I want to say that I'm just not going to say in this vlog. Um, but I'm glad I didn't post either one of those because there was something, there was a couple of things I forgot that I just remembered today. So I do feel like it was, uh, like I looked up in the sky. I was wondering if I should post this and I said, God, give me a sign if I should post this vlog. And I saw a couple of geese flying east. And I said, no, that was a sign. So, on with the vlog. Although, I like the season this year. I did enjoy this season. This season was much better than the past few seasons. And there were some things that, that made it interesting. And I'm that we'll talk about a little bit later. But I'm still sort of wrestling over now I know I've said they've you know had a lot of food and of course Kevin Hart, this is gonna be maybe a heavy Kevin Hart vlog. One of the uh, normal commenters who's going by some anonymous user thing right now. Not Kevin Hart, but not the Kevin Hart usual uh, tagline. But I said they've had quite a bit of food and he's like, well, well, you know, not really. They're starving out there. Compared to other seasons, there's been a lot more food taken than any other season and I'm not sure if that made the show better or if it took away from some of it it was it was good not to see the four corner starve it was good to see people out there right till the very end gathering food and not trying to store it and wait it out it was good to see that, but I think, like I've said before, I'm giving them kind of food, or the ability to sustain themselves at at least a slower rate of attrition brings on the the mental the mental pain, the mental starvation. And I'm not sure if I enjoy seeing that. Maybe that's my only thing about it, but I did enjoy the, the season overall. The end was sort of anticlimactic, climatic though. I mean, I don't know if it was because we did have at the very beginning when we were doing our Contestant assessments. We did have William as a dark horse to win it. Based upon his living in uh, Newfoundland and his experience as a fisherman. His, his work as a fisherman. So we did kind of pick him. Of course, Dub, Dub, the main pick, the number one pick. Of course, came in third. So we'll briefly talk about Dub. I think you know it's like in the, even he said I. He had his mind made up that when that helicopter landed that day, that was it. He was he was the winner. 
his mother was going to get off the helicopter and tell him he had won. And when they got up and left, uh, mentally he was he was out. Um, I'm just really not certain about a 44-year-old guy with such an attachment to his mother. I'm not sure. But he did bring up something, and I'm going to call it the Johnny Fairplay hack. The Johnny Fairplay hack. So if you don't know who Johnny Fairplay is, you're going to have to, like, Google him and find out what he did on Survivor, what made him notorious and infamous. So I I think in our preseason selections, and this has to do with the, should we notify you in case of an emergency? I think anyone that puts no on there is almost an insta-tap. Because as soon as they start thinking about family, and, oh, you know, little Johnny could be in the hospital right now in traction. And I wouldn't know about it until he got home after, you know, two or three uh, surgeries on his leg. And I wasn't there for him. And they start coming up with this stuff while they're, you know, sitting there in their hut. So it would be nice to know at the very beginning of the show whether or not they want to know if anything bad has happened to a family member. Now, that way, hey, if no one calls you and tells you, you got nothing to worry about. But here comes the Johnny Fairplay hack. And you're going to have to look up Johnny Fairplay because I'm just not going to tell you. You're going to have to work for this one. But the Johnny Fairplay hack is going to be this. You're going to say, yes, you want to be contacted. And then what I would tell my family members, this, I would say, hey, look, here's the schedule. I'm going to this camp, this pre-drop camp. So we're set to be in the woods on, let's say, November 1st. So if you haven't heard anything, so that'd be November, so that'd be January. So here's what you do. Like January 2nd or 3rd or something like that, I've been I've been in the game. If you haven't heard from me, that's been about 60-some days in. I want you to call the show. I want you to call the producers and say, hey, uh, you know, this is Jane. I'm Tarzan's wife, and... I want I want you to get a message to Tarzan that his dad has had a heart attack. We've taken him to the he's been taken by ambulance to the hospital. We think he's had a heart attack. And then they'll go tell him that this is happening and hopefully they'll let you call home. So you're going to be able to call home, see about your father, and it's of course it's a it's a it's a fake, but you get to talk to your wife. Oh, your dad it turned out to be, you know, stress. Your father's doing fine. I'm doing fine. Everyone's doing fine. Talk to you later. So you get the hack where after about two months out in the woods, you fake a family emergency so you get to talk to your family members. I don't know if they'll let you talk to them. Maybe they'll just tell you what's going on. But if they let you talk to them, that's the hack. That's the Johnny Fairplay hack. So I'm going to skip over to William, the winner, because really my vlog is more about Timba than it is about anything else. I had said the last few vlogs that William reminded me a lot of Australia's season one winner, Gina, and that they just sort of went with the land. They really didn't fight much. They, um, they just kind of took it in stride. 
And one thing that I found out through the podcast that I didn't realize was that they were actually, they were not supposed to store their food at their camp. So both Dub and Timba were violating some of the rules of a loan. Apparently it's a rule that they don't necessarily make the contestants adhere to. But that's why he kept getting all of his food stolen from Sassy. Because he was following the rules. So he brought in the, uh, I think the... The, the official podcast called it the the Grouse Grabber 3000. It was good to see some, I guess you could say, non-traditional ways of uh, acquiring food than, uh, you know, the snares and um, the bow. You know, he didn't take a bow and arrow out there with him. Uh, he was, you know, set to go 100 days. He was during the interview on the podcast. He was, he was planning on this being a hundred days. He wanted to get to a hundred days, so this dude was probably going to win no matter what. He just had a whole different mentality than the rest of them, and he seemed to just kind of go with the flow of of what came his way. Pause for a drink. Refreshing. So that was William. Now we get to Timba. So here's a guy. It was kind of funny because I said, I thought in the previous vlog that Timba would be next to Tab. And of course the Formerly the the uh, subscriber or the commenter formerly known as Kevin Hart. I believe I believe it's Kevin, anyways. Had made the comment that I like. Are you kidding me? The guy's got it made. I just didn't see him lasting. I did not see him going the distance. Um. So then he starts, I guess, feeling guilty that he knows he's basically has won this thing, but winning it brings on a financial burden of how to divvy up the money and maybe I wish I would have given it to this group instead of this group. I don't know, but he became um, feeling guilty over this. I never have, I've never understood, and this isn't just Timba, but any of them that tap out and basically um, have said, well, I, I came here and I did what I wanted to do. So I feel good about tapping out. I've never understood about going there to doing what you came to do. What you came to do was win the competition. Or so I guess everyone thought. And you're happy about tapping out. Um... I don't, I don't, maybe if you had more to, you came what you, I, I'm not sure how losing, you, you came, you came out there to lose. I don't understand how losing could be so fulfilling, especially when the point was to win. I never quite understood that. And the other thing, too, that really struck me rather odd 
was during the podcast, he talked about how one of the first things he did was when he got home was he went down and uh, went to the bank and requested a bank loan. I'm like, you, you got to be kidding me. You you basically had $500,000, probably about thirty, about three fifty after taxes in your back pocket. That you could have done what you wanted to do, but now you want to go pay interest on a loan. A loan. <laughs> a loan. A bank loan. I, I just, the thought never occurred to you while you were out there deciding whether or not uh, it was the moral thing to do. That, geez, I'd, you know, I'd like to tap out and, you know, because this is such a heavy burden on me about giving out the money. But maybe I'll stay in and at least stay in long enough to get, you know, my personal things set up. And then we'll, I guess, divvy out the rest. I, I, I cannot understand where he is coming from. Now, there was a few other things that I would like to comment on that I'm not going to. Maybe at some later time, but uh, I think it, if if I even do, it needs to be handled much more delicately. And I just don't, I don't want to talk to him. So there is a few things that I want a couple of things I wanted to comment on, but I'm just not going to. So it was a bit, like I said, the the ending a bit anticlimactic. I, maybe it's because you know one of these three guys is going to win, and it makes it easier to figure that out. But we'd we'd pick William as a dark horse to win. Um. I think if you're going to go on a loan, I really think you need to think about the Johnny Fairplay hack and uh, try to use that to your advantage. The Grouse Grabber 3000, two thumbs up for that. And... I, I don't know. I've as much as I enjoyed the season, the uh, although you know, for they they may have been starving in a sense. There was much more food out there for them to to to, to gather. Um, I'm still not sure how how I feel about that. I'm just not so sure. So that's about it. Maybe there'll be some stuff later. I do not know. I really... It's a very... It's a very difficult... <laughs> uh, that's it. <laughs> I'm not going to say anymore. So with that, this is Charger Troller. Saying aloha and good day.